Today, I'll show you how to make a platinum containing cancer medication. Let's start with the simplest compound named cisplatin. Cisplatin, or by its full UPAC name, cisdiamine dichloroplatinum 2, is quite interesting from both a chemical and a medical perspective. But we can talk about that after the synthesis. Equipment needed. We'll need a round bottom flask, a heating block, a dimroth condenser and a thermometer. Chemicals required will use some potassium tetrachloroplatinate, ammonium acetate, potassium chloride and water. Potassium tetrachloroplatinate is a reddish solid. In the flask we combined 0.25 grams equivalent to 0.6 millimoles of potassium tetrachloroplatinate, 0.2 grams of ammonium acetate and 0.2 grams of potassium chloride. Then 25 milliliters of water is added. Over the next two hours it's mixed in a reflux. You can clearly observe a color change from the reddish tetrachloroplatinate to yellow cisplatin. The solution is left to crystallize in the refrigerator over the weekend. Afterwards the suspension is filtered and the residue is rinsed with water and voila, we have cisplatinum. Is it pure? Well, some analytical tests should be done definitely, so we recorded a UV vis spectrum. To record the spectrum, a blank measurement was first made using only the solvent, followed by the actual sample. Dimethyl sulfoxide was used as a solvent. If you examine the spectrum, it becomes clear why DMSO is not ideal for the UV range. It interferes too much. It's definitely not the starting material as this one has an absorption peak at 490 nanometers blue green which makes it appear red as we have seen at the beginning of the video. Our product has an absorption peak at 400 nanometers violet which gives a yellowish appearance. This confirms that it's no longer the starting material however proving that it's specifically the cis isomer is more challenging for that the trans effect or just chemistry in general is used a justification that we conclude it's actually the cis isomer. Let's first talk about some chemical basics with this compound is a beautiful example and then afterwards we can discuss fundamentals on how it works as a cancer drug. Potassium tetrachloroplatinate reacts with ammonium acetate to produce cisplatin acetic acid and potassium chloride. During the synthesis, side products such as the green magnus salt and metallic platinum are formed, which is why this product has a slight greenish tint. Magnus green salt, which I just mentioned, has the following composition. This is exciting because we have platinum in both the cat and the anion. Green is actually rather unusual for platinum compounds. Now we can go back onto the main topic of this video, the cis platinum. What does cis stand for? Cis describes the spatial arrangement of this compound. You might remember cis and trans alkenes from basic organic chemistry. In a cis alkene the substituents are on the same side of the double bond. In this case the both amine ligands are on the same side of the platinum complex. The synthesis of cis platinum makes use of the trans effect which is a kinetic phenomenon in square planar complexes. I'll explain that in a moment. When one ligand is replaced, in this case it's a chloride ligand, the second substituting ligand has now two options. It can either attack on the trans position relative to the first substituent or it can attack in the cis position. Different ligands have varying degrees of trans directing effects. Generally the strength of a ligand correlates with the strength of its trans directing property. Wait a minute, isn't amine the stronger ligand? Shouldn't it direct the second amine ligand to the transposition? Not with divalent platinum. In aqueous solution, the chloride ligand is the stronger ligand and has a stronger transdirecting effect. These two chloride ligands have opened the transposition for the second amine to end up in the cis position relative to the first amine ligand. Let's take a closer look at the ligand field. Since we're dealing with complexes, here's a quick summary. A complex consists of a central atom and ligands. Ligands donate a electron pair or electron density to the central atom. The central atom itself has electrons which are described by orbitals. For the d-block element, these are diffuse orbitals, meaning they extend far into space from the nucleus. When ligands approach the central atom from, let's say, infinity, conceptually, the d-electron feel their presence first. Due to the repulsive force of the ligands' electrons, the d-electrons experience different energy levels depending on the coordination geometry. 
Among the 5D orbitals, some of them are energetically favorable to occupy, while others are less favorable because the ligands electrons push into them with their negative electric charge. I will make a detailed version someday when I have the animations to support it. Why does cis platinum work as a medication? The platinum 2 plus ion has 8D electrons. For the 4D and 5D metals, there is a very high ligand field splitting expected. This means that even with relatively weak ligands, square planar complexes can form. And this is exactly what allows the cis platinum to perform its function as a drug. It is a square planar complex despite having weaker ligands. Nickel, as the lighter relative, wouldn't form a square planar complex in this case, but rather a tetrahedral one. However, the square planar geometry is essential for the cisplatinum effectiveness as a medication. So let's take a quick pause. Let's take a look at the graphic from Wikipedia, which provides a rough outline of what I will discuss next in a bit more technical language. First, cisplatinum enters the cell. One of the chloride ligands is replaced by water, making the complex positively charged. Why does this happen only inside the cell? In the blood, the chloride concentration is approximately 100 millimolar, whereas in the cytoplasm, it drops to 4 millimolar. Cisplatinum enters the cell either through passive diffusion or an active transport likely mediated by the transport protein CTR1. Once inside the cell, cisplatinum can form adducts with various molecules, including proteins, RNA types and DNA. The platinum atom can coordinate to the N7 position of guanine or adenine, forming inter- and intrastrand crosslinks. These crosslinks can block transcription or replication, ultimately leading to cell death. This effect is especially devastating for tumor cells as they proliferate more rapidly than normal cells, making transcription or replication blockages far more significant. If cisplatinum is a cancer drug and its synthesis was so simple, why haven't we cured cancer yet? The very observant among you may have noticed that after the two hour reflux, yellow cisplatinum was visible at the bottom of the flask. This poor water solubility, which simplifies its preparation, makes it less effective as a medication. To use inside the body, large molecules are required to package the cisplatinum into a usable form. This molecular packaging for improved bioavailability is called formulation. This creation of such a formulation is by far the most complex part of the production of the final medication. Of course, cancer is not a single disease. Cisplatinum generally inhibits DNA repair, leading to cell death. But its effectiveness as a cancer drug is purely statistical. Naturally, it also comes with severe side effects. Pharmacologically speaking, there's so much more to explore, but I can only dive this far into it because I'm a nuclear chemist and not from this field. Still, isn't that cool to explore some platinum chemistry to create such an important compound? Without the help of Rose and Noah from Professor Klein's research group, this video would never been possible. So a big thank you to all three and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.